postcard. As important as that is, we need to take ongoing action. We need to organize people. We need to be out in the community raising these issues, making connections with organizations that are working on social justice issues and driving home the economic and moral costs of these policies. So if you'd like to do that, please sign up, and I'm gonna ask Peter to come back here again and send around a sign-up sheet. If you'd like us to send you a whole organizing packet with postcards and petitions and flyers and fact sheets, everything that you need to go out into your community to talk to people, to organize them, to get them to join with you in this national campaign, please sign up and we'll be happy to send that to you in the mail. Before I stop, I just have one uh, final plug. I understand that there are a lot of people here tonight who are not yet registered for our conference, which begins tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for breakfast at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. We still have room available at our conference if you'd like to join us for Saturday and Sunday. Or perhaps you'd like to come and join us for our gala awards dinner tomorrow night, also at the University Center, University of Missouri, Kansas City. We're having a very special dinner and honoring some very special individuals and organizations that are doing outstanding work to end Israel's illegal blockade of the Gaza Strip. We'll be very, very proud to give our Courage in Congress Award to Representative Brian Baird from the state of Washington. He'll be joining us tomorrow night and delivering a keynote speech and accepting this award. This is the last opportunity you'll have to show your thanks to Representative Baird as a member of Congress because unfortunately, from our perspective, given all the good work that he has done, he's retiring at the end of this term. So please come out to honor him. Please come out as we honor the Free Gaza Movement for breaking Israel's illegal blockade of the Gaza Strip. And we will also have a special hip-hop spoken word poetry performance by local Kansas City group, The Recipe. So please come out tomorrow night, 7 o'clock for dinner. Uh, individual tickets are $35, and you can talk to one of us outside at the registration table afterwards. So thank you all for coming. Thanks again to the mosque for having us here this evening. We appreciate it, and uh, I hope we have time for some discussion and questions. Anyone that can put a face on the horrors going on with the occupation. And even though it was a mystery to me, we all watched our TV, uh, we all saw, unfortunately, Israelis running to bomb shelters. But where did the Gaza people run to? Could they get out by land, by sea, by air? And people see these on TV and they still can't root for APAC. They still can't get a hold of the face of a Palestinian and their suffering, like Mohammed Atwa that spoke at the Rachel Corey movie, and Mohammed talked of his mother, who is, uh, is a sugar diabetic victim and could not get her insulin. And seeing him just last couple weeks at the flotilla um, in, at, on the plaza, that demonstration, she can give some now, but in small packets. And even if she got a larger amount, there is no refrigeration to keep that. So there is, it seems, food going into Gaza, but if you listen to BBC too late at night like I do, and have interviews, the Israel cereal is a nicer box. It's not crushed. It's not dust on it, like those that come in from Egypt. But 
They are $7 a box. This is cereal. And those from Egypt are only $5 a box. And think of this for the Gaza people. Yes, there may be some food coming in, but what are they doing to earn money? Can they get their produce out? Can they get needed things in for manufacturing? How can they even buy the $5 box of cereal? And I don't know. I don't understand it. I care deeply, but everything that comes to mind first is the greed. The greed of our weapon companies. The oil in that area. It makes no sense logically to Muslims, Christians. I cannot speak for our Jewish brothers and sisters. I, I don't understand it. But I would love to welcome your questions. And if you just want to step up to the mic, and, um, or if you have a loud voice, um, we, all the panelists would be happy to hear from you. You guys really did a good talk. Uh, do you, we have time? We can go to the mic. you want to bring up some points? All right. Do what do I ask Josh? Josh, how effective are those postcards? Did, did everyone hear the question? My question is really about sending these postcards. Uh, we tried, uh, there is a, a, an organization here in Kansas City called Muslim American Society of Human Foundation, and they made some postcards for free Gaza. My question to Josh is this, are these effective? How do we know that these are, if every one of you, or, and we take it to others, and we send them, how do you know this is going to make any difference? Because the other power, the other side is really have more influence. How can we, t how can we measure this? That's a good question and it, it very often is difficult to quantify and measure the impact that you're having on policy change. Especially when the interests that are opposed to you are so well entrenched as you mentioned. On one level, you never know how your efforts will bear fruit. Uh, during the Korean War, many different Quaker organizations and some other organizations uh, engaged in a campaign of sending to President Eisenhower rice packets to the White House in a gesture similar to what we're saying here tonight that we need to meet human needs and not waste our tax dollars on endless warfare. And no one knew on the outside whether that was having any impact on the Eisenhower administration's thinking. But in fact, if you look at his papers and diaries and so forth, they made a profound impact. Uh, so you never know. Uh, it certainly won't be enough to get the policy changed. That's for sure. If it were just as easy as being right and having logic and morality and justice on your side, we would have prevailed a long time ago. But that's not how politics works. Uh, politics works by people organizing, by people getting together and uniting behind common goals, and by translating their power uh, into pressure on elected officials. So the way I see this, this is kind of a first step, and hopefully uh, not the last. And if you do sign one of these postcards, we'll be sure to keep you updated with many, many more opportunities for you to take additional action so that we do see that policy change, hopefully in the near future. May I have a question? Necessary component, policy change on something like this that is so fraught for policymakers can't change unless they recognize that they can get away with it, that it's not political suicide. Now, so far, they don't get that. But what is true is that no one denies 